realized through a school for black children, no surprise. Producing alumni like our own Dr. RPB. So today on this campus we stand to honor this visionary Ohog land. By the time this program is done, you would have figured out who is this one. At this time, we will have This Bible no, passage reading, reading is taken from, from Philippians chapter 4, verses 4 to 7. Rejoice in the Lord always, and again I say rejoice. Let your moderation be known unto all men. The Lord is at hand. Be careful for nothing, but in everything by prayer and supplication. With thanksgiving, let your requests be made known unto God. And the peace of God, with passive all understandings, shall keep your hearts and minds through Christ Jesus. Here ends the Bible, Bible reading. Please stand and join us for the morning song, Thanks.
heart Give thanks to the Holy One Give thanks because He's given Jesus Christ His Son
Thanks. Please be seated. I recently saw a meme which demonstrated the difference between a boss and a leader. The boss sat high and lifted up, literally, as the workers struggled to pull the load, him included. But the leader was up front pulling the load with his team. This is the kind of leadership which we have here at the Hilda Skeen Primary. So this morning, I called on our team leader, Principal Ivan Clark, to share a few remarks. Um, good morning. I think we are, Madam Chair, I think we're getting ahead of ourselves a little bit. I think it should be uh, Reverend Dean. Reverend Bean, sorry. Should be doing prayers now. Sorry about that. Good morning, everyone. And uh, Mr. Principal, I was there praying in my seat. I first of all want to congratulate Mr. Clark and the students and of course the community here at Hilda Skeen on 25 years and for the excellent work that you have been doing and continue to do on behalf of their partners in education and of course the extended family at Holy Trinity Church. We congratulate and salute you. Obviously, there is a tie between Holy Trinity and Hilda Skeen. I am told that Hilda Skeen is a combination of Beulah School and Holy Trinity School. And so, it's amazing that the Trinity Church Hall was built as a place to educate the children of the community. And COVID-19 has caused the Trinity Church Hall to go back to its original use as a place to educate children from the community. And today, as you unveil this bust, I pray that you continue to celebrate the legacy of the one who, of one who inspired, cared, was industrious and enterprising, a true national treasure. Let us pray. We give thanks today for the work and legacy of Hilda Ski, a true trailblazer, one who was able to balance caring and nurturing with strict discipline, who went the extra mile to help those children who could not afford education. I pray that this bust will be a constant reminder of a spirit of excellence, care, discipline, and initiative. I pray that you continue to pour your grace upon Principal Clark, the staff, students, and community here. Continue to endow them with your vision to bless and order their steps. And we pray your, blessing, your blessings upon these proceedings and all those who teach and all those who learn. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. Minister of Education, Technological and Vocational Training, the Honorable Santia Bradshaw, Parliamentary Representative, Dr. Sonia Brown, Chief Education Officer Acting, Mrs. Adamson, Reverend Bean, 
Reverend Elcott. Principals, past principals. President of the Kiwanis Club, old scholars, Dr. Stetson Wiltshire, special invited guests, members of the PTA, family of the late Hilda Skeen, Leroy and Alfred Joseph. Ladies and gentlemen, students, welcome to Hilda Skeen Primary School. First, let me highlight those who have gone before me, those persons who would have built this institution or who would have, been, who would have contributed to building this institution. Let me first welcome Ms. Mrs. Hortens Carrington. Mrs. Carrington, please stand. Mr. Ari Butcher. Mrs. Marcella Wood. Ms. Eleanor Brathwaite. Is Ms. Wendy Wilcher here? Not a principal, but long-standing teacher. Ms. Burnett. Is Ms. Burnett, I saw Ms. Burnett earlier. Monica Clark, is she here? Monica Clark, yes. Maureen Innes, the person who would have designed our uniform. Roger Giddens, the composer of and the person who scored almost 125 calypsos that were penned by our students. That's Roger Gittins. And the person who would have written, who would have composed the, the, our school song. Today marks a new chapter in the life of this school. We're here, we're here to honor the legacy of Hilda Ashton Skeen. At every graduation ceremony, without fail, I would say I'm proud to present this report of this school named after the great Hilda Ashton Skeen. My intention is to continue the legacy of this great lady. This school continues to be built on resiliency. Staff some years ago stated in their in the, in the vision that they would like this school to be a school of choice. Today, it is a school of choice since we refuse and refuse students every single year. The COVID-19 pandemic proved that we are resilient. Teachers worked tirelessly to ensure our students got back at school. Let me congratulate my teachers for their hard work that they put in. They work the night before until 10.30, moving chairs, desks, to ensure that we had a prompt start on the Monday morning. Teachers gave up their lunch hour, even now, to supervise their charges. Since we have in our midst the lady in pink and the gentleman in blue, the monitors from the COVID unit, who are like hawks, who usually swoop down on us to ensure that we do the right thing. That's a compliment, ma'am, <laughs> ladies and gentlemen. <laughs> and I agree that there should be. Our teachers make sure that our students are well supervised. School is the place where not only math and English are taught, but valuable social skills for life. Our teachers here did not miss a beat in transitioning from online to face-to-face -to -face teaching. The pandemic did not even stop our physical educational classes. The ash didn't either, because dance and movement became a part of the physical activity in our classrooms. As you look around, you will see the work done by our children to break the monotony of this season. They built, they planted, they sang, they danced to lift their spirits. The, the imperfections are all theirs. If you look to my right, at this fence, just one glance, please, one quick glance, please. Don't look too hard. You will see it used to be a green fence. I gave them two gallons of green paint only to realize that they decided they wanted the, the, the fence in blue. But I'm not blue, but <laughs> someone tell me it's artistic. It is their doing. <laughs> we try to create an institution that, like Ms. Keene, children can take risks, are fearless, sense fear paralyzes. Our aim is to produce 
a world citizen. Barbados is too small to be our world, and the world is ours. Let me congratulate all you students who gave of your best and who continue to strive for excellence. Today, we are proud, we are proud that the bus of Hilda Ashton Skeen is here, along with the soon-to-be-developed Hilda Skeen Memorial Gardens, where we hope we will have a wall of honor, a place where one can sit and read and reflect. This monument is to remind students about your own legacy and your quest for excellence. I would like to congratulate the artist and his associate, Mr. Phillips, please stand, the sculptor. The sculptors, the giving of your time. I would also like to thank Rudy Gibson of the New York chapter of the Industry High, who made this possible. They would have funded the entire project with the help of the of, um, Dr. Stenson Wiltshire. Just a note, our PTA also worked tirelessly in this school and continue to work tirelessly in this school. They've organized an award ceremony, or rather certificates for all those children who would have excelled during the COVID period. I want to thank again the president of the PTA and members who continue to give up their best. Special mention must go to Ms. Padmore. Ms. Padmore, please stand. And Mr. Mark Kelman. Mark, during the pandemic, we made sure that families who didn't have enough to eat, we gave. We gave of our own the eggs, the chickens, plus the food that Mark would have gotten to assist our, our families. Again, ladies and gentlemen, thank you very much for being here. Thank you. At this time, we will have brief remarks from Honorable Dr. Sonia Brown. Mr. Santia Bradshaw, Acting Chief Education Officer, Ms. Joy Adamson, Principal, Mr. Ivan Clark, Dr. Stetson Wilshire, past principals, students, teachers, good morning. First of all, I want to give my humble thanks to Mr. Ivan Clark for insisting, and he did insist, that I be here to say a few remarks to the children. Um, it was necessary for me to go through the history of this lady whom the truth is I knew very little about other than I knew students who would attend the Miss Skeen School as it was called in my time. So I did my research and I thought some of what I found may have been, might be helpful for the children and the teachers. So I take you back to the 1930s in Barbados. At that time, we would have found an island, like the rest of the West Indies, in the midst of the Great Depression, when the sugar industry began to collapse, work was scarce or non-existent, and when work did exist, the wages were low, with, with scales being fixed at 30 cents per day. People were poorly nourished, housing left much to be desired. And apart from a privileged few, West Indians were poorly educated and in many cases illiterate, according to the historians. A daughter of, of St. Philip, I am proud to say, as I too am a daughter of St. Philip, a black daughter no less, born in 1902, Miss Hilda Skeen founded her first school at a tender age of 24. Some um, literature says 26. But I take it from past students that it was 24 years old when she started the industry high school with just a small number of 12 students in six roads. It was then relocated to the home agricultural station and finally to Headings in St. Philip, not too far from here. By then, the row had increased from 12 to 450 students. The school catered mostly 
to children in the surrounding areas, but it was not inclusive to them. People came from St. Michael as well to attend the school. And these students, for one reason or another, were unable to gain entry into other secondary institutions. Some of the reasons being financial, way back at the time, maybe in the time of my dad, people relied on scholarships to enter secondary school. Some who attended, a personal friend of mine who attended Miss Skeen School, he did have a scholarship, went to Conmere, but for financial reasons, the scholarship ended and he um, finished his education at, 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 part of his education at the industry high school. For reasons like they were unable to get enough so-called marks for the so-called common entrance exam. Tuition of, um, at the school was not free, but not costly. But the inability of parents to pay school fees in no way hindered the educational process of the students, as Ms. Skeen often waived fees or allowed delay in payment. It may be surprising to some that Ms. Skeen, as, it as the school became known, Ms. Skeen School, offered a curriculum which included English, both literature and language, foreign language, type writing, home economics, um, accounting, and the list goes on. Past students, ski knights, RPB can attest, as they were fondly, they fondly called themselves ski knights, went on to further studies in nursing, education, entertainment, law, we have Peter Pilgrim, those of you who may know him, politics, meteorology, those of you may remember Victor Laria on the news, not these children, way back when, when he used to do the news reports. He was a, a, an alumni of, of the school. And it produced several people, and also skilled workers and housewives extraordinaire. But one cannot ignore the extraordinary strength of character of the woman. Although she was not married, nor did she have children of her own, as was the art of the time, she was the mother of many. Over her 50 year span as a teacher and manager of the Hilda Skeen School. She is described by past students as a strict, was she was a strict disciplinarian, demanding that homework and other assignments be handed in on time. Never sparing the tambourine rod, I'm told. She did not spare the rod literally to spoil the child. But in the same sentence, she is described as caring, loving, humble, a Christian woman, and a pillar of strength in the community of headings. She certainly left behind a legacy that demonstrated the school's motto of success, success through hard work. In this time, our Barbadian children are desperate, hungry to find heroes and heroines, someone to fashion their lives after, often finding them in all the wrong places and for all the wrong reasons. We have reached a time, which to me is unfortunate, where heroes are seen as those who can incite violence and vulgarity through lyrics and dance. Where children are being made to believe that being on the block or being in a gang is a goal for which to strive. They recognize that how you dress or how you wear your hair for a job interview, for instance, has no bearing on anything. Our children are now even more confused as these behaviors are often defended by those who, to my mind and in my opinion, should know better. My advice to you students is to seek wholesome heroes and heroines like Hilda Skeen, who though from humble be beginnings was able to reach lofty heights. Someone who was able to inspire and cultivate a desire in her char charges to be the best that they could be. Seek those who are more concerned with the wishes and needs of others than their own. Equip yourselves with the ability to recognize them. And today is a good start. Read up on Hilda Skeen. Get to know the heroine, nay, the superheroine that she was. Let her legacy live on in you. Strive to become heroes and heroines yourselves. Pass on all the good that you have learned let your lights shine. But remember, heroes are not self-proclaimed and not self-appointed. They are recognized by others for what they did or what they are doing. Heroism is characterized by 
acting voluntarily for the service of others who are in need, performing actions without any expectation of reward or gain, recognition and acceptance of the potential risk or sacrifice made by taking heroic actions. That is, for example, standing up for others and situations may put you at risk. <clears throat> If you remember nothing else as I end, nothing else that I have said this morning, remember that, one, black people can achieve greatness. Sir Garfield Sober is in, in the spirit and feel. You have Sir Stetson Wilshire, better known by me as RPB. Two, women can achieve greatness. Fine example, the Honorable Prime Minister, and there are many others. Three, lack of money cannot be deterrent to achieving your goals. You have the example of Ambassador Anthony Gabby Carter, as they say, AKA the mighty Gabby, Gabby. And four, choose your superheroes wisely. Thank you. Music thrills the soul. And to thrill our soul this morning is our school's choir, led by our lovely, not just visually, but vocally, Tanya Lewis. They will perform two pieces, so do enjoy.
the Hilda Skeen Choir. As you heard in Mr. Clark's remarks that we are not all mass and English here at the Hilda Skeen Primary, but there's music and we also have drama. 
I get all excited when there's drama and poetry. So today, I'm certain that you will get all excited because I can't wait to see this performance, which was pinned by schoolgirl Shakira, also known as Sharon Branch. She knows what she's talking about as she has been a member of this staff for the last 25 years. Hold on to your seats and enjoy. Good morning, everyone. My name is Shakira, and I'm here to share with you some of the fondest memories I have of this great institution, the Hilda Skin Primary School. So, uh, let me go, let me go, let me go, let me go. Hilda Skin. All right, let's go. Hilda Skin. The best in the Caribbean.
Technology nationally. Come to the stadium, take the city, and work on the acrylic. We run with pride. The Elder Scheme flag was flying. Darkness into the light from down in the valley to mountain high. So we will put our roots. 
down spread far and wide because he is forever at our side. So when we look back, we have no other choice than to unite and rejoice. Why? 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 We were called the nasty school, but not anymore. Look around, you will see we have beauty. Yes, beauty galore. And I'm sure you will agree with me that Hilda Skin is the best school around. So I want all of you to join us in the refrain and say oh, one, two, three, four. Everybody, let's go. Thank you so much, Shakira, and the other students. At this time, Mr. Mark Kelman. Oh, it's not. Okay. At this time, we will have our featured speech by our Minister of Education, Technological, and Vocational Training, the Honorable Santia Bradshaw. Master of Ceremonies, the Honorable Dr. Sonia Brown, Member of Parliament for St. Philip North, Mrs. Joy Adamson, Chief Educational Officer Acting, Ms. Hyacinth Griffith, Education Officer, Mr. Ivan Clark, Principal of the Hilda Scheme Primary School, Reverend Bean and Reverend Charles, Dr. Stedson Wiltshire, staff, students, and parents of the Hilda Skeen Primary School, relatives of Hilda Skeen, members of the media, ladies and gentlemen. Let me say at the morning, at this, the outset rather, that I'm not sure if I should sing or I should dance, but I must tell you that I am exceptionally pleased to be here. And I say that sincerely because I am witnessing not just the input of the principal, the staff, and the management of this school, but also a community of persons coming together in the interests of the children of the Hilda Skeen Primary School. I'm here, like many of you, to witness the unveiling of a bus which has been created by local Barbadian sculptors in order to honor the memory of the late Hilda Skeen. I want to thank Mr. Walters and his staff here who have again been doing an exceptional job in putting this event together for the invitation to be here to participate and also to the students who would have presented this morning um, and I think we should really give them another round of applause. There is a saying that no one is ever honored for what he received, but rather rewarded for what he or she gave to society. It is therefore not surprising that the idea of this bust, a memory of the late Hilda Skeen, came from the industry high school old scholars, New York chapter. Those are the persons who would have personally benefited from the leadership of the late Hilda Skeen, from her mentorship and certainly the opportunities which she provided to many of them. And indeed, it is an idea 
which has been readily endorsed, readily received and accepted and fully supported by the principal, the staff here at the school, the wider community and indeed the Ministry of Education. We have already renamed this school in her honor and some may say that the symbolism um, of that perhaps is sufficient. I mean, there are not many people that I know who have the opportunity to have an entire school named after them. But the truth is that oftentimes we rename a school or rename a building without a proper understanding and a deeper appreciation for the reason why that person's name and that person's legacy is being etched in the history of Barbados. Hilda Ashton Skeen was more than just a name. She's a reminder of what excellence in leadership should look like. And I'm pleased this morning to say that it is clear from the dramatic presentation that the current leader of this institution has certainly paid tremendous attention to the leadership which she would have offered and is certainly carrying on the legacy at this institution. Hilda Skeen is a reminder to those who seek to enter the teaching profession that teaching is about making a lifelong impact on those with whom you have responsibility. It is about creating opportunities for students to be able to tap into their true potential, not only in the classroom, but also outside of the classroom and being able to help them not only socially but also emotionally to develop into well-rounded individuals and citizens. I could therefore think of no better timing for this unveiling ceremony. In the midst of a pandemic, when our educators have, as we've heard earlier, been called to action to make sure that our children were properly catered to, to be able to make that transition from face-to-face -face into the online environment and to have to do so in a manner that I don't know that if, if we had the time, perhaps we would have been able to prepare them, but we simply did not have the time to prepare anyone for what has unfolded from this pandemic. And I want to say a special thanks to the staff here at this school for your continued commitment to these children. Many of our children have fallen behind, as many of you are well aware. Many of our children have had their learning disrupted during this entire pandemic. And as a result of not having the face-to-face -face teaching, I think you could all accept that we're trying our best as a government to ensure that not only are they able to continue to do their mass and their English, but certainly that the cultural arts and the creative arts become um, almost commonplace within the, the curriculum and certainly from the earliest age at the primary school as well. Indeed, this ceremony is also a reminder that our responsibility as educators is not about simply the impact that we have on our students today, but it is also about the impact that we will have on them for tomorrow and for generations to come. As the Ministry of Education, we recognize that we must also plan for the future. And much has been said about education reform. I think, again, this is testimony this morning that it is simply not about numeracy and literacy alone, but also about being able to give children a wide range of things from which they can choose from. As the principal um, indicated to me earlier, um, you know, there are young people here this morning who are excellent in relation to farming. They're excellent in terms of their approach to dancing and to drama. And therefore, this school must be able to tap in, and others must be able to tap into the true potential of our students so that no child is left behind in our educational system. In the same way that others have had to plan, we've also had to plan in education. And this particular institution came about as a result of the expansion in the St. Philip area. Um, all of us have witnessed St. Philip just simply develop into a large housing community and has produced some amazing stalwarts over the years. But the Holy Trinity and the Beulah Primary School would have amalgamated several years ago in order to create this wonderful institution. And we also recognize in the Ministry of Education that we have a responsibility to continue to improve our school plans. We've started some minor works here at this institution. There are still some additional works to be done. And while I always say the government will do what it has to do, 
I also continue to appeal to the private sector, to the persons who have passed through this institution, the PTAs, to get on board and to work with us to be able to do not the large scale infrastructural things, but to do some of the simple things that are necessary in order to create a safe plant and a safe environment for our teachers and also for our students. We recognize also that because this area is growing in St. Philip, this, this, the constituency of St. Philip generally and the parish of St. Philip is growing, that we also have a responsibility to start to look at additional spaces, additional locations for schools. Many of our schools, like for instance, St. Mark's um, has perhaps um, you know, suffered just like the others that led to the amalgamation here. They have also been suffering over the years in terms of a large student role but not having sufficient plant to be able to allow children to properly um, play and certainly to be able to um, you know, utilize the entire space that is there. As a consequence, um, we are in the process at the Ministry of Education in looking at all of the schools, but in particular, if I take St. Mark's for instance, we are in the process of working with a private benefactor to donate some lands um, through the Ministry of Education in order to be able to construct an entirely new school so that we can really relocate those students. And I'm sure that that will not only benefit those in that surrounding area, but I'm sure it will ease some of the pressure on institutions such as this as well. While we acknowledge the contribution of Hilda Skeen, I also want to take a moment to acknowledge the contribution of the principals who have gone before, Mr. Clark as well. Mrs. Verlin Blackman, Mrs. Merlene Brown, Ms. Marcella Wood, Mrs. Eleanor Brathwaite, Mr. Ori Butcher, and Mrs. Hortense Carrington. All of whom, just like Mr. Clark, understood the very large pair of shoes that they would have to fit and the footsteps in which they would now have to walk, which has been, the path has been laid by none other than Hilda Skeen. This school's vision and mission continue to be the bedrock of this noble institution. Not only have the staff and the principal here ensured that there is a developmentally appropriate teaching program within the classroom, but they've also ensured that the students are well-rounded through a number of extracurricular activities. And we got to witness just a snapshot of some of those this morning. Um, I, I often on Sunday um, afternoons visit a number of the schools and I, I discovered on an informal tour one afternoon um, some goats in the back of this particular facility and was quite impressed by what was um, taking place here. Because I think all of us would agree that our students have moved so far away from agriculture and the only way that we can teach them to eat what they grow and grow what they eat is if we start the process of the transformation from the earliest age, teaching them to appreciate nature, because by appreciating nature, they have a better understanding of life. They get to understand how things grow, how things interact with each other. And therefore, there are ways to also teach maths and English and other subjects by incorporating it into the agricultural programs as well. And very shortly, when we start back in September, it is the Ministry's intention to start the process of working with a number of the agricultural teachers and those who are interested in agriculture across the schools to ensure that every single primary school has an agricultural program, not just Hilda Scheme. I know the pandemic has impacted in a number of ways the ability to keep animals. Um, and therefore, we may have to make some variations to the programs. But at the genesis of all that we do must be a better understanding by the teacher, teaching profession, certainly, to be able to incorporate aspects of agriculture into everyday basic education needs for our students. And similarly, in music as well, in the creative arts, there's also a perfect opportunity to be able to engage students who otherwise may not be as engaged in a formal setting, but certainly come alive in this type of setting, being able to be in the outdoors and certainly to be able to express themselves in a different way. And that really is what the future of education must be about. It is what the, um, the mantra of the ministry um, and the focus of the ministry is now about even more than ever because we recognize that it cannot be business as usual in a pandemic. It cannot be business as usual if we are to save all of these children and ensure that they have the best foundation in terms of their education. 
I want to also indicate that I'm happy that the singing program, the Calypso singing program, has challenged the Honorable Dr. Stetson Wiltshire, RPB, and has, um, I would like to think, has basically caused him now to spend some more time here at the school because he has to show to these children that they are not better than him. But indeed, by working with them, I am sure that um, he might get some ly lyrics for some future co um, competitions as well. We miss the, co the co Calypso competitions, um, which contain often the self penned songs from the students. And I'm certainly proud of former students Miles and Jazz Gittins, two talented musicians. Um, this school has produced people like Akila Jones, um, an Olympian. I mean, it, it is amazing what these institutions can produce and what we can produce with strong leadership and people who are committed to getting the best out of our students. I want to say well done to the Hilda Skeen Primary School. Now, Ms. Skeen was what I consider a trailblazer. She was a woman of vision. She was an entrepreneur with a love of children, and I like the fact that Dr. Brown mentioned the fact that you don't have to have children in order to care about children, because she is testimony to that as well. She had an interest in national development, and let me just say here that this morning, as I was coming down the road, I had a conversation with my father, Delal Bradshaw, who reminded me that he was also a student of this, of, of the industry high school, and you know, I, I could hear in his voice that he almost felt like he wanted an invitation to come because he, he felt so um, filled with pride because of the contribution that this lady had made to his life. And, you know, truth be told, we never know what the impact is as, as teachers and educators on the charges that we have responsibility for. And I can certainly say, as, as I've seen with certainly RPB and others, that dad went on to become a principal of his own secondary school as well. And I have seen the impact from students who passed through his hands, how they felt about what he has done for them, and in turn, how he feels about what Hilda Skeen was able to do for him. I think the first set of certificates that he would have obtained would have been um, under her tutelage. And he reminds me of a woman who was not just about education alone, but was about providing an opportunity, a well-rounded um, environment for students to be able to learn and to tap into their true potential. And I think if nothing else um, that we take away from her legacy, it is the fact that we really have a responsibility to tap into all of the talents of our children and to encourage them in whatever area they are interested in. Dr. Henderson Carter in the book Shaping the Nation, Principles of Barbadian Schools, indicated that Mrs. Hilda Skeen was identified as a pioneer in education when he highlighted schools within the St. Philip and the surrounding community. She opened a school with 10 students, and as we heard earlier, would have graduated those numbers to over 400. I would have to say that considering how difficult it is now to manage even a small school like this, I cannot imagine what it was like to have grown a student population from 10 to start to manage over 400 children. And then to come to realize that it has produced the, the likes of politicians, it has produced the likes of doctors, it has produced you know, top Calypsonians and ambassadors for this country, um, and also police officers is the other thing that my father reminded me. There were a number of inspectors who also passed through her institution who would have benefited and who went on to be you know, leaders in their own right. So this lady whom we honor and celebrate today has written her name on the history's page of Barbados by creating the necessary learning environment that was necessary for students of all walks of life to be able to excel. She contributed immensely to the parish of St. Philip and to wider Barbados. And this school, of which all of you students are a part of, proudly bears her name. Today on the eve of the 25th anniversary of existence, we salute, commend, and recognize the tremendous work of Ms. Hilda Skeen with the erection of this effigy. This stands in remembrance of a woman who could be considered one of the great craftsmen of our fate. I believe that the students who are here today are quite privileged. I mean, we're in an environment where we've been able to get many of them back to school. 
and they're here to witness what we are doing as adults in order to recognize people have long, who have long gone before us. And I certainly believe that this is one of the days that forever should be etched in their memory. Uh, but I will ask the teaching profession here and certainly the principal to let us ensure that this journey and this unveiling is not about the unveiling of a plaque alone, but that within the classroom, within the history classes, within the general classes about life skills and learning about life, that we continue to ensure that Hilda Skeen's legacy leaves an indelible mark on these children in numerous ways. And it is our responsibility to ensure that it is more than a monument, that it is more than an unveiling ceremony that we do today. The only way that we're going to be able to change the current trajectory of this generation is if we work together. And that means that all of us have to be builders and craftsmen of our faith. We cannot allow the legacy of people like Hilda Skeen and others who have been able to craft a space and create opportunities for um, other men and women in this country to be allowed to languish. And therefore, today, I believe, begins a new chapter in this institution, one which certainly the Ministry of Education will continue to support. And I want to encourage the students to, if you don't know about her, get to know her. And if you know only a little bit, get to know a little bit more. But it is important that you ask questions, you inquire, and also from the educators and that you also ensure that we, we learn not only about Hilda Skeen, but all of the leaders of this institution, all the people in the community who have contributed greatly to this country and to this community as well. With that, I want to say again a sincere thanks to the entire team here. I want to continue to encourage you to blaze the trail that you have been blazing. I look forward to a return, certainly in September, to us being in a position to have all of our children participating fully in activities because in some cases we've had things watered down somewhat. But I look forward to it, and I'm pleased for what is on the horizon. <coughs> so I want to say thank you, and I look forward to the unveiling. <coughs> Good morning, everyone. I'm going to ask Minister Bradshaw she doesn't mind coming back for two seconds. As part of the process to honor Hilda Skeen, the PTA came up with the idea of creating the Hilda Skeen Memorial Award of Excellence and the Hilda Skeen Certificate of Excellence. At this point in time, we have two students who I'm going to ask Mr. Bradshaw to present the Award of Excellence to. The first one is Inea Sylvester. She is in Infant B. Um, Inea Sylvester will have received During COVID, this young lady would have participated in Pine Hill. They had a national campaign for a poster. And at seven years old, she won the poster competition representing Hilda Skeen School. The second award goes to Nishon Kelman. Nashon will be the recipient of the Chief Scout Bronze Award. He's the first boy ever at Hilda Skeen to receive this award. Both of these children will have made these accomplishments during the COVID period. But it just goes to show that if you want to, you can do things no matter what your situation may be. Good one. Come back. 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 Come back.
you want to take what you all the end of this thing. At this time, we are going to ask the minister to stand again as she makes her way to the bust. And the other dignitaries who will join her as well. And we will hear a bit about the artist and the piece. Heldo was designed as a result of value. Just creating and placing it in, in mind was not good enough. The artist chose to position her on the water. In doing so, it accentuates her as the ocean, calm and serene, yet always on the move. The four poster podium represents the rocky path she had to traverse that built her strength. The leaf is reminiscent of the pride of Barbados, blooming as the water flows, much like Hilda Skeen would have done. The graduation hat showcases final achievement after years. Hilda was designed as a result of value. Just creating and placing it in mind was not good enough. The artist chose to position herself on to position her on the water. In doing so, it accentuates her as the ocean, calm and serene, yet always on the move. The four poster podium represents the rocky path that she had to traverse that built her strength. The leaf is reminiscent of the pride of Barbados blooming as the water flows, much like Hilda Skeen would have done. The graduation hat showcases final achievement after years of study with light emanating the bright future and new journeys to be undertaken. All complete with the school sash, it encourages all those to strive for the top like she did against all odds. Only the best is good enough as described on the school. The design was mastered by Aminart Designs Limited and the sculpture artist, his name is Arl Dan Maat Phillips.
Um, yeah, good morning, one and all. Uh, thank everyone for being here. I appreciate the presence of all concerned. I just want to say um, thanks very much, and I want to give a special, um, I should say, uh, shout out to my brother and brethren here, David Guru McLean, who has been a great support for me over the years. Um, another brother, Peter Small, who has been my assistant and support through this entire project. And not least, um, there is Parsi Tate, who have enabled me a building that I can do this work and set up all of the pieces together that we can have this monument, monument established and unveiled today. I want to thank the minister and all those staff members of the school and the students and all the assistance that I've had throughout the period of this executing this project. Thanks again. I love you. Bye. Yeah. Thank you once again. We also want to acknowledge the relatives of Ms. Keen who are here with us. Thank you for joining us this morning. At this time, the only person who is able to get this done the way it should be done is our principal. So we want you to stand, boys and girls. Sing, as the, sing the school song. Uh -huh. right. so you, you do the who are we? Or yeah, afterwards. You're doing it afterwards? Yeah. All right, we'll sing, we'll sing the song first, and then Mr. Clark will do his chair. Acknowledge Albert and Miss Louis? Miss Louis, please. Cool song.
Thank you. Honorable Santia Bryshaw, Honorable Dr. Sonia Brown, Acting Chief Education Officer, Mrs. Joy Anderson, Mr. Ivan Clark, our principal, reverence, past principals, invited principals, our most valued guests, members of staff, students, ladies and gentlemen, it is my great privilege to be here to propose this vote of thanks. I, Davida Pinder of the Hilda Skeen Primary School, extend a hearty welcome to all our speakers this morning. We are grateful to the Honorable Santia Barsha, Minister of Education, for her featured address and the unveiling of the Hilda Skeen bus. I must mention our deep sense of appreciation for Dr. Sonia Brown, the parliamentarian representative for her brief remarks on, hero on heroism. I express thanks to Mr. Bean for his benevolent praise over today's proceedings. I also want to thank our artist, the sculptor, our own Dan Matt Phillips, for his creation of the Hilda Skeen bus. I also express thanks to the media and the media resource department of the Ministry of Education and Technological and Vocational Training for their life courage and technical expertise. I express great appreciation to all our guests in attendance and also to Mr. Ivan Clark, our principal, for his excellent coverage over our prestigious school. Ladies and gentlemen, an event like this cannot happen overnight. The wheels started rolling weeks ago. It requires planning and a bird's eye for detail. We have been fortunate enough to be backed by a team of very motivated and dedicated colleagues who know their job and are result oriented. So I want to take this, uh, this opportunity to acknowledge them and express my thanks. I want to thank Mrs. Lewis and Shea Branch and also the choir for the musical pieces. Mr. Branch, Mr. Wardron and the students involved in our very entertaining dramatic presentation. I also want to thank the Hey Boy and the Hey Girl for their biblical reading and express thanks to all other members of staff who work so hard behind the scenes. Ladies and gentlemen, I thank you so much for being here. It has been a great pleasure. Thank you.